Awesome, wonderful. So welcome everybody. Welcome uh, to our to our guest speaker. We have with us today, Regina Bernal. Welcome to the audience. Uh, it's so nice to see all of you here. And um, we're so excited to, um, to have, a, this is one of the first workshops of the summer. And uh, we have a, a wonderful guest speaker, uh, Regina, who's gonna be talking with us a little bit about um, how we as entrepreneurs can can adapt and and can um, and can maintain during these difficult times. And so, with that, I'll let Re Regina uh, maybe take. Oh, before I pass it over to you, Regina, one thing I will say: if anybody does have any questions or comments, if you could uh, put them in the chat, and we'll address them at the end. And um, and if you well while, while uh, Regina is presenting, if you wouldn't mind turning off your uh, microphone and your uh, camera just to, uh, to to ensure that we have the best connectivity, and then we'll turn them back on at the end. So, all right. With that, I'll pass it on to Regina. Oh. Um, can you hear me? Yes. So thank you so much for the invitation. I'm very, very, very happy um, to be here with all of you. Um, this I'm also new to Zoom presentation, so I've done a lot of um, speaking. I spoke, I gave a TED talk actually at the Symphony Hall, and somehow I was more confident doing that than talking into my computer. So this is definitely a new territory. So if something doesn't make sense or if you have questions, make sure you um, add it to the chat or um, you could also, if you want to unmute yourself, if it's a very pressing question, I'm very happy to take them as they come. Um, so with that, let me share my screen and we can get started. Sounds good. Uh, let me just, sorry, one more um, here. Where, let me just see, wait, uh, cause I need to do also share computer sound, wait. Yeah, that's one thing that we definitely um, want to make sure that we're doing is that we so that we can hear the sound in there. So, but we'll let you know if anything, if at any point uh, we lose you or anything, we'll let you know. And uh, we're so all math when it comes to the zoo, to the Zoom. So great. So now, uh, so can you see my screen now? We can. We can. Um, so as Tanya mentioned, um, I am the entrepreneurship manager right now at the University of San Diego. So we're kind of neighbors very close in my role. I work with our student entrepreneurs, but I also do a lot of our community engagement. So we've also been running um, programming during the summer um, around resiliency, around different topics that are relevant to our student entrepreneurs. Um, so today I'm going to be talking a little bit about resiliency, pivoting and adapting uh, to changes in the market. And I thought this image was really great, especially during these times of we will be back. Um, I'm going to play a video and um, I want you to focus a lot on the imagery, even if the sound is not the best quality, um, you know, bear with us with the Zoom, but it's a, a video that I, I watched and it really, really resonated with me. So I wanted to share it with everyone. So Tanya, if you, um, when I press play, if you can just give me a thumbs up that you can hear it, that would be really helpful. Sounds good, sounds good. There we go. So I'm gonna press play.
Um, so when I uh, watched that video, I became really interested, and that's from the World Economic Forum on something they're calling the Great Reset. So if you haven't heard about uh, what the Great Reset is and what the initiative is, that fundamentally um, we've changed, right? The, the way decision-making, um, we see it every day. And basically with the premise that we are facing a very different world than we were, you know, a couple months ago. Um, so let me go here. So um, it is clear that uh, everything has changed. Uh, so now what? is basically where I started thinking about not just the presentation, but as I was working with other entrepreneurs, as we were really starting to tackle these very, um, you know, interesting conversations amongst each other of what has changed, how have we changed, and how can we better um, adapt to change. So that's what inspired a lot of the theme of resilience. And I think for me, resilience has been um, a, just very important, not just for work, but also um, as I think about myself, about my life, um, about my career and the future. And something that I really liked was a quote that was, the way to make sense of change is to plunge into it, move with it and join the dance. And I think that's just more relevant than ever right now with how much change we're seeing, um, you know, as part of our everyday life. And then a very um, especially significant component is how much we need to put the focus back on the entrepreneur and not just the idea. So for a lot of time, I, in my view, we really have focused on these unicorn ideas, right? You know, what we read about in articles about these disruption and all of these words that we use to describe ideas. And in a way, now we realize that more than the idea, the focus goes back to the person. Um, as student entrepreneurs, how many entrepreneurial ideas have you had? I mean, probably even this morning, just because of who we are and our personalities, we probably have already come up with, I don't know how many ideas, right? So there's something about um, making sure that you are your best asset. So your ideas can change, but you, how you train yourself in resiliency is one of those components that I think is going to be so important um, for investors or for mentors, or as you start building a team for your venture. One of the important things here that I see is, you know, how are you responding to change? Are we able to be fluid, flexible, keeping an open mind? Are we able to take a step back and see our venture with new eyes? Or are we just stuck trying to rush back to the, the way things were or this resistance that sometimes we have to change um, is, is a really good question to start asking yourself. How quickly can you pivot and adapt? Are you open to pivoting? Like, can you see, you know, sometimes we fall in love with our idea, but can we listen to what, if people actually want our idea or, you know, right now, does our idea look different? What does our customer want? What are our key stakeholders uh, going through? And if in your case, you have customers, when's the last time that you talked to them? Did you ask what they're worrying about? How they're interacting with your product? That's uh, some, some of the very important factors. Um, so here, are their habits changing? You know, are we making assumptions? What are they worried about? Uh, if you have seen a lot of the car commercials, they all, or actually now that I think about it, probably all commercials that we see on, on you know, TV, they're all very focused on, you know, this back to what's important in life, right? They all have similar music, what's important, we are in this together. So obviously that's a theme that's a very relevant theme in the world right now. How are you incorporating that into what you do and how you com uh, communicate your um, value proposition? So I see that there's so many opportunities right now for the resilient entrepreneur. Um, this is the best time for you to build key relationships for your venture and for life, right? So the way that I want to see this presentation is, of course, have a focus on the business component, but then also on the long-term plan that you have for yourself. So as an entrepreneur, um, you're going to have a lot of different phases of life. And I think that right now, in these times, you are able to build relationships with people that maybe you would have never had the opportunity to do so in the past, right? Um, another piece of it here is with LinkedIn, um, it's incredible how many people you're able to reach on LinkedIn. You know, right now, it's really easy to find a common ground, right? Like, 
I'm really very interested in what you do. I really admire the way that you're leading your team. I'm interested in your venture. Would you mind jumping on a quick call with me? You know, most likely they're going to, to say yes. And something I heard that I really, really resonated with is people will always remember who, who and how you showed up during these times. And this goes for, you know, for the good and the bad, right? I think that right now as a way to build relationships and to build trust is a great time, but it's also a time where you can lose a lot of trust. So um, I think it's okay to be vulnerable, to realize that we're all feeling a little overwhelmed. There's a lot of things that are changing at once, but sometimes also in that openness and vulnerability is where you're able to build some of, you know, the key relationships that you need for your business and for yourself moving forward. And then um, one of the po points I also wanted to say was listen and be a smart consumer or inf of information. So what is the story behind the scenes? Can you use your empathy? Are you able to get out of your own perspective and actually try to see things from a new perspective? I think is very important because I think right now we're all seeing things from our own eyes. And in order for any venture to be successful, you really need to start to kick off um, your empathy and put yourself in the shoes of others. And again, as I mentioned, you know, what's important to them? How, are, how do they feel safe using your product? Um, the other thing, is it you know, worth the cost? Does it align to, um, do they really, are they jumping up, up with excitement when you tell them what you're trying to sell, right? And so for me, um, I, the way that I saw uh, first, you know, pivot as a life skill. So pivoting is important, not just for your business, for, but for whatever you choose to do in your business. If something we saw, um, you know, from the video when we started is life is always changing. You know, we're in a constant change. And I think that this times of COVID has put a microscope maybe on these changes, but it doesn't mean that everything was going to be constant. So I think that becoming um, comfortable with the theme of pivoting in your life is a great skill to, to train into and then also in your future. Something I'm really excited about also is the opportunity to reinvent yourself. So I think you have an ability to reinvent yourself as many times as you like, you know, as long as you're able to keep an open mind. Um, and I mentioned this too, but there's, you know, two ways to, to approach change. Either you kick and scream and fight, or you're able to flow with the change. And it really is um, a personal choice and having honest conversations with yourself of, you know, am I resisting a change in my business? Is it, you know, this is my way, this is the way that I want to do it. But clearly my customers are going a different direction. And am I able to, to keep that flexibility and adapt to the flow and to the change? Um, and then focusing a little bit on the pivot in business. And I want to, of course, give the credit. This is from the Board of Innovation. I do have the link that I'm happy to share after. But I was part of a, a presentation not too long ago about the kind of the low touch economy. And I was just, it really blew my mind because it really helped me see, you know, how the world was changing and how it was being shaped by the current crisis. So um, from what you can see here, and again, a lot of this information uh, is on the website and they have a, a report on what is the, the low touch economy. And so, I mean, you can see the example that they hear, right? Like remember back when a handshake was a standard form of greeting? For as long as we can remember, the handshake has been used as a way to convey trust between friends. Um, but now, you know, we, we re-examine that gesture. And I think that's a great example to see how a lot of things are starting to be um, re-examined. So if you look at the column at the bottom of the contributions to the low touch economy, you know, social distancing regulations, now that things are opening back up. I mean, if you've gone to a restaurant or, you know, if you've ran into a friend, even the way that you greet them, the way that you interact is different. The way that you, um, you know, you, you act at a restaurant, you have to, when you get up, you know, wear the mask, different things. Um, travel, obviously, very different than what it used to be. You know, this, this thing of um, quarantine, maybe you travel, but then you have to stay two weeks in quarantine. If you travel at all, depends on how safe you feel. So these are all contributions to the, the new low touch economy, maybe new hygiene guidelines. I think we've seen it, you know, front and center with restaurants. 
of how much they've had to pivot and how much they've had to change into their new guidelines that they've needed to follow. But I think that's the case for a lot of businesses. Um, and then there's also an impact in how humans behave. I think that there's going to be a big, we've already seen it, but societal behaviors are starting to change, right? So there's precautions against physical contact, um, avoidance of large groups, a turn to all things remote. So um, for example, in, in my personal line of work, we ran a lot of high visibility, big pitch competitions, right? So big events, we bring in 300 people together, we do our version of Shark Tank, we give out funds to the entrepreneurs. So now I step back and I just really think, I mean, will people want to be in an auditorium with 300 people by October? Probably not. How do I take it online? Am I able to replicate the, the same networking that really is important as part of the competition, right? There's a piece of it that's giving funds to our student entrepreneurs, but there's an even bigger piece perhaps of creating those connections with potential um, investors. So that's something to be thinking about, right? And then um, uh, expected impact in the economy in the last column, right? There's very important to think about short and long-term aftershocks, right? Um, I think that we all had this feeling that, oh, you know, there's going to be a switch that's gonna just be in, you know, turned on and we're gonna go exactly to the way things were. And we're slowly starting to realize that actually that's not the case, right? It's going to take time and some things will, re re will return, maybe not exactly in the same way, but it's just a lot of change. So I talked in the previous slide about, you know, the personal pivot of mindset, your personal pivot of the way that you approach change. And then here I'm talking about things to think about for your business venture. Um, and then again, really invite you to, to go uh, into this. Um, and again, I will provide the link, but and you can, you know, read up on it. For me, I just wanted to share, you know, this has been one of the most useful tools I have been using and sharing. Um, and it's on their website. They're doing a tremendous job. So they're, you know, talking about what companies should do in the meantime, right? So you have to assess the impact. Of course, there's some that are going to be more impacted than others, right? There's if your idea is in the events space, you know, I'm, there's a company uh, that was at the brink at USD. I don't know if any of you have heard of, about them, but it's a company it's called, uh, now they're called Meta for Acai. So they had um, kind of, they, uh, it was a marketing platform to help bring people into big events. Obviously not as necessary anymore. So they've made a pivot into doing more um, kind of online platform for events, which they're, um, you know, they've rolled out and they're doing a tremendous job. So assess the impact, right? Like, is it a huge impact in your industry? Is it a huge impact in the, in the business? I guess the cautionary one there is to think, oh, you know, I'm not impacted. I really don't think that there's any business right now that, you know, will not, maybe it's impacted for the better, right? Like if you are selling things for homes, people are really spending a lot of money right now um, or just a lot of attention to the home, right? This, this building of, you know, I saw that there was a, a company uh, that had a lot of uh, like house plants and they were doing, you know, a great job that was up. So just assess what impacts. The other thing is develop what, what is your strategy, right? Like from the spectrum of how impacted you are to not impacted, what is the strategy who are you bringing in to help you bring that strategy? Are you, you know, reaching out to your mentors? Are you building those relationships? Are you talking to your um, potential uh, customers? And something that they also said, again, this is all on the innovation board that you can go to their website, um, is, you know, plan for the aftershock. You know, things will, like what I said, they will not go back quickly, if ever. There's some industries that are just not gonna go back to exactly the way they were. So I think it's important to keep that in mind as you, you right now are, you know, I think actually in a really good position right now to be where you are because you're able to have all of this mentorship and all of the support as you make these changes. So I actually think that it's very beneficial for you right now where you are. And of course, you know, the kind of the make it happen. Take advantage of the new world um, to, to bring to question all the previous business norms, right? So I think 
we're very dang we're in a dangerous territory when we go and our answer is well that's the way it's always been so i don't think that's going to be the response for anything anymore uh so i think it's up in the air right we're able to to question human behavior previous norms how we used to interact how we what we expect from each other what we expect from businesses um and so i think that you know going being strategic going on the offense and really planning for that aftershock and not having the expectation of oh you know the the constant once once this is over everything will go back to normal especially dangerous territory for your business so i'm um, just something to think about is uncertainty will remain but also will opportunity um this there's i guess two ways to see it and one is um that this is which it is very hard very difficult but seeing you know what opportunities have been open for your venture for your life that you weren't thinking about in the same way um is also i think a great way to see it and i just wanted to give one uh, like and there's many examples i'm sure that you've seen so many of them uh but one of them that i was reading about earlier today was you know open table now lets you reserve time to shop for groceries right like we never really imagined that this there was going to be a need for this right but um they are paying attention so if you now go to a grocery store you see the lines outside so for them you know a way to potentially make a pivot is to be able to reserve a spot you know in grocery so uh, many tech companies are pivoting due to this and some are doing it better than others um i invite you to do your own research and see kind of all of the the industries that are changing and some of the pivots that are happening i mean i think you already probably know and have seen a lot of the obvious ones um but you know just something very interesting to see there and uh i after this of course i'll open it up to questions i just wanted to give kind of an overview but make it more conversational um and not just a lot of information that i'm giving to you but um something that i can conclude is that we have proven that we can change and we can innovate and we come together but it's going to have to be with you know openness to change mindset and this focus on resiliency so um with that so that i can actually start to see my interactions too um i see that there was some questions uh here in the chat box but again i i really want to like hear maybe some of your business ideas where you're at where you see some potential pivots and just make it as interaction as as we can and use the time that we have together yeah absolutely and i was i was going to say uh, also if uh, if you want to turn on your thank you by the way that was wonderful thank you so much for sharing regina if you do want to turn on your microphone to the audience and and you can turn on your camera now too um just so that we have more more interaction um and uh and I'll remind you one more time before we're done also that there's we'll be sending out the survey but please if anybody'd like to ask a question please do so now. Then I will ask the question from Angela. Um she did ask if you have any um recommendations about like uh, about virtual uh, conference platforms if you've used any. Yeah, so that that's actually Angela. I'm working on that right now as you know as we speak because I think we're all on the same boat of, you know, how do we create these virtual conferences so that you know, a lot of what happens at vir at conferences, I mean, if you've ever attended is the networking piece, right? Like many times you go and maybe you go to some sessions, but overall you go to meet people who are in your industry, right? So I think that's one of the pieces that we really need to be um careful as we move to the virtual world, right? Because like what what we did right now, I mean, I can sit here and talk about things for 5 hours, but is it going to be useful and are we meeting each other in in strategic ways? So um the one that I mentioned was uh Meta by Asai. So I'll write it, but it's uh it's this Meta by Asai. and it's still um it's a, it's a young company it's a San Diego startup um again they're working with the brink uh they're they're making a pivot but i just used their platform not too long ago and something that i really liked is that they have a great piece uh, to network right so basically you know zoom breakout rooms we've all used them they're a little clunky yeah they're like, there we go chris peters shout out so yeah. chris is my colleague at the university of san diego definitely an amazing person uh and chris if you don't mind um also i mean with your email cuz 
Chris is one of my favorite people in all of San Diego startup world. He knows a lot. And he actually invited me to, um, to the, the presentation about the low touch economy. So he, he's very into that as well and an incredible resource. But here with Meta by Asai, I did try, um, I've done a couple of them and they're, they're great. I see other people are putting things in the chat. Yeah. So uh, we are working on that, the Commons XR. So I, I'm still testing, you know, but I think something important is how could we, it's not just about going virtual, it's about creating the experience, right? Um, so something to think about there as well. Yeah, I was just going to say, I just wanted to add, I actually um, went to a, a virtual conference at Startup Week from Meta by Asai, and I was at, I was thinking, finally, you know, somebody's doing something where we're not just uh, in, in separate um, spaces, and I'd like to see how that, how that goes, and I, I would, um, you know, I'd love, I'd love it if, um, I don't know if maybe, maybe you can share, uh, or either Chris or, or Regina, you can share what exactly they're, they're doing with that platform. Chris, if you're there, maybe you know a little bit more. Uh, as, as far as uh, how they're pivoting now, I can't really speak to that so much. Um, I know that the, the current iteration, actually they have an event tonight that I can share a link to. Cool. And they're doing a couple of things. One is having featured presentations um, and uh, conversations so you can listen in on some people that you may be interested in uh, hearing from. So for example, it was inspired by when you go to a networking event and there are a couple of people talking and you don't really want to contribute. You just really are interested in what the people have to say. They have highlighted conversations like that. Otherwise, the sort of standard feature is uh, to have kind of a round robin one-on-one -on -one, uh, connection experience with people of different, uh, from different stakeholder groups that have labels. Cool. Yeah, and, and I think that for me, that was the most useful. So for anyone interested in that uh, kind of one-on-one -on -one quick speed networking type of interactions, just by attending one meta event, already I, I met like four people that I immediately made a connection with um, who actually were in similar industries and we followed up after. So I think that was like definitely the, the, the strength of it. Also on the chat, I'm putting... Um, what I talked about the board of innovation and uh, there is the, the kind of the, the low touch economy report and it's really interesting. And actually they even have um, a, a live Excel sheet of all the companies that are pivoting right now. Um, so you're able to see, uh, you know, maybe there's one that's similar to what you're trying to accomplish and see how they're pivoting, but it's definitely very, very interesting. So that's on um, the website. You can go there too. download the report. It's free. So it's great. And I was wondering also if um, Ray, if you, I don't know if you're, you're still there if from TCXR, I believe that's Ray. Is that, could you, I, I'm just curious uh, if you could share if, what you're actually doing in that realm too. Just curious. Sure. Yeah, just very quickly, what we're doing is we're creating virtual uh, rooms, virtual areas for people to work together. Um, the Verbella, that's not us, that's a UCSD startup. Um, <laughs> they actually have something very similar. There's, there's quite a few out there, um, uh, a VR chat, uh, there's a, a VR space, um, space VR, sorry. So there's quite a few things that are already uh, launching into this next space, uh, Regina, that are really, really interesting uh, yeah. from a perspective of how do you still keep community at the same time? How do you manage uh, the interaction, like you said, of the conferences and all of that? So. Yeah, I think um, I think the more competition, the better, because somebody's going to win. It's just a matter of uh, who has the best product in the end. Yeah, I completely agree, and I think that's um, you know part. If there's something to to take away from today, is this attitude of opportunity. I think you know just paying attention. How are people reacting? Right, like where what's a problem? Right, right now. Sometimes you know I talk to a lot of students. And they're always like, oh, I'm, a, I'm very entrepreneurial, but I just, you know, I don't have the perfect idea. And I think that right now we're seeing so many opportunities of needs, right, that we can solve, we can test. So I think if anything right now, it's like such a fertile ground for the curious entrepreneur. So if you're curious about starting something, pay attention to how humans are interacting. You know, where do you see the need? I think that's um, just for me where I see a silver lining in all of this. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I, go, I, I, 
I mean, even something like today, right? Like that's maybe, you know, the, the, the challenge of moving of, you know, from USD to your college, which we're really close, but it seems this, you know, it seems like we're so far and, and now just virtually we were able to create a connection. Right. So that's, that's an opportunity there um, that, you know, has been made not possible, but definitely it was, you know, the speed of it happened quicker because of a situation like now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful. Do we have, um, do we have other uh, questions from, from the audience? If not, you know, I actually wanted to uh, share maybe a couple of poll questions from your, uh, from your presentation. So I'm just going to ask these questions if it's okay with you, Regina. Yeah, just to see. Perfect, you. Okay. I'm just curious. There were a couple questions that you asked during your, your um, talk. Can everybody see the, the questions? Yeah, I can yeah. see them. I can see them. So we'll give it just a, a little bit more if you can just give your, your, your answer. And the first question is, how many ideas for a new business or to solve a problem have you had in, this past, in the past week? You're all entrepreneurs for the most part, right? How many ideas are you coming up with? And if you've been uh, talking to your customers uh, recently, what, what are they concerned about? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll here. So go ahead and submit your answers and then I'll share the results with you. So can everybody see the results? Can you see them, Regina? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's so it's interesting because I think with the one to two ideas, the three to four ideas, I think that sometimes, Sonia, we get like, you know, stuck in that. Is it a good idea, right? Like, mm -hmm. but it could be ephemeral, right? Like, I was. This is one I had, you know, like for restaurants. I'm sure that if someone is able to really help the sanitation, uh, well, this was and I shared idea with my boyfriend. Actually, he thought. Um, he thought, you know, for the sanitation of air conditioning, right? Mm -hmm. so restaurants right now, if you're able to go in and say, well, we can adapt something, you know, that could actually help with the air quality of the restaurant, such you could use that to, to tell your, your, your clients that, you know, you're a safe mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that was, you know, that was one. I just see right now, like even the masks, right? Like different things before we had a shortage. Now we have a, a surplus. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. All of these things but I think even for me sometimes I get very intimidated by is, is it a good idea is it not a good idea is it a fully thought out idea right so I, that's why in the one to two three to four but that's still very very entrepreneurial right so you know given this of course and um, it's interesting because if you've talked to your customer recently what is our primary concern and it is I think you know health and safety I think everyone's thinking about it and um, for your business, how you're able to communicate to your customer that you are taking the necessary safety precautions that you, they make, you know, that they're safe, I think is great. And then also, of course, that, you know, the finances and economy is a huge piece of what we need to be thinking about. And I actually, we did a pitch competition type of thing with some investors. And something that I thought really interesting that the investors said was to have a slide of kind of what your business looks like in an up economy and a down economy, right? Like, and have strategies behind that. Um, I think we were already kind of being pushed into this lean, lean, you know, mythology, but right. now with the finances economy even more. Um, but I definitely think that with, with health and the other part that I would, you know, that's really key is the part of surveys, right? Like you just did it right now, but if you have a group of people that you are your potential customers and such that you could actually ask and say, you know, what is your primary concern right now with interacting? And if, if it is health, like I can speak from behalf of the University of San Diego. Mm -hmm. So when we surveyed our students, our faculty, our staff, the number one thing that came up on the survey is, are we taking the necessary health precautions to go back to campus? Right. So then you know where you need to focus your, you know, your energy. So, yeah. Yeah, listening to your customers. And um, <clears throat> Martin Danner actually asked a question that uh, I'd like to see if you could answer. How can we replace the serendipity of chance conversations in the office? I agree. 
And so many yeah, people yeah. are missing that. Yeah, yeah. And you know, Martin, something interesting there to think about too is also, uh, you know, power dynamics and how you, because for example, you know, it's access to leadership in a way sometimes, right? So some people have it and some people have less of it. And then by, you know, requesting a Zoom meeting, it's not as natural, right? It's not as natural as a casual conversation that you can have in the hallway and you can ask, right? Because now you need to make a request. Can I get on your calendar? Do you have an appropriate Zoom time? So in a way, you you make something that could be as casual as a cooler conversation into something more formal. So that's, um, that's, I don't have, I don't think anyone has a specific answer. That's a great problem to solve. Exactly. That, that's, that's an amazing, problem yeah. To solve, I think we also don't know exactly what the timelines are of you know, everyone going back. We talk about phases. We talk about, I just think that right now as entrepreneurs, like I, we, we all know the, 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 I guess the hilariousness of a business plan and how it can change overnight. And I just think that as a world right now, we're stuck on the business plan mm -hmm. and the only way we implement it, it's like, it can change. Right. So I think we're tackling these, this is, you know, this is the plan. And then it's like, okay, well this happened. Okay. That doesn't stick to the plan. What do we do? Right. So I think that's, you know, the flexibility of having a plan and a strategy, but being very open to things changing quickly mm -hmm. and organizations and, you know, we're as humans, we talk about, you know, being so open to change, but it's actually really hard for us to change. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. We say, we say, we say we love it, but in reality, right. in reality, yeah, we're, we're creatures of habit. Yeah. Yeah. And um, someone here, Yvette said, you know, the curious entrepreneur, I love that term because, you know, for me, like the way that I've approached what I do is being an entrepreneur within an organization. Right. So I am very entrepreneurial, not just because I start all my businesses, but I can see opportunities in different things. So mm -hmm. I would maybe say for me, I am very much kind of the curious entrepreneur mm -hmm. of always looking at, you know, how, how things work, how they could work in different ways. So I think there's, you know, this feeling that if we allowed everyone to be a curious entrepreneur, instead of just labeled as having these, you know, unicorn type of ideas, we would allow a lot more creativity in general. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So do we have any other questions from the audience? Yeah, I have a question. This is Billy. Hi, Billy. I, so can you repeat, go way back to the beginning and repeat what you were saying about LinkedIn and how you would go about um, messaging people? Yeah, and I'm happy. And this is another thing. And I, I will make myself available to people in this call if you want to have a set like I'm obsessed with LinkedIn is basically <laughs> I want everyone to use LinkedIn I want you to build a powerhouse on LinkedIn because it's just incredible so uh you know the, a tool like LinkedIn really allows you to connect with people that are leaders or, or in your industry in a matter of seconds right so mm -hmm. all about how you begin to position yourself on your LinkedIn right like you share what you're passionate about maybe you reshare Maybe you start to become, um, you know, you send signals of what you're passionate, maybe even commenting on what someone has shared. And right now, the way that I've seen it is in this virtual world, right? Like for me, I've been able to, to think about speakers to come in from everywhere, right? Because I'm not asking them from, for a one-on-one -on -one meeting. I'm asking for a quick 30 minute chat, right? So I'll, mm -hmm. give, you, I'll give you an example. Uh, maybe there's a business that really admire or there's a, an entrepreneur that you think wow look what they're doing I, I if I if it was me I would send them a note hi you know I've been watching you know your journey I'm really impressed by it. I'm a huge fan of your work I'm really impressed I'm currently a student entrepreneur I'm very excited for the future you know uh, would you be willing to make time for a 30 minute call to and then you kind of make your ask and don't be afraid the worst thing is that maybe you got to know but you will get a yes because I think that right now there's um kind of a, a karmic change to supporting student entrepreneurs and people are willing, you would be surprised how many people are actually willing to make that connection with you. So I'm happy to, to look at, you know, your LinkedIn or if, if you want to talk more, I think it's such an amazing tool. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank, thank you for saying that Regina, because I am always pushing them to, to be using LinkedIn. Just they, they know they hear this all the time from me. So I'm glad somebody else yeah. says it. 
be like an exercise that you can do in this group on LinkedIn is to share a really quick post of, you know, what you've learned during this time, right? Like you are going through the program, you're, you know, asking yourself questions about your business and there's actually a feature on LinkedIn and I, I, you can find your way because I'm sure you all, you know, it's pretty intuitive, but just by sharing, you know, a cool image that you can find and just some key takeaways of during this time and then maybe tagging your mentors and giving them a shout out, like tagging Tanya, you know, or people that have been with you during these times, you would be in shock of how many people, like how well received that is. So or the amazing guest presenters too, like share, but you start to build your network, right? And it doesn't, it doesn't require you to be an expert writer. You know, we're not looking for, a, you know, a writer of the New York Times. We're looking for an authentic share of something you've thought about and then tagging others, I think is really strategic. Great point, great point. So I think we might have time for just one more question if anybody has something quick to, to, to ask. Well then, if not, then I'll, I'll let, I'll maybe pause a little longer and then, if not, uh, Regina, if you want to just uh, kind of t take us out, if there's anything that you want to add. Yeah, and I uh, thank you so much for the invitation. I really um, want to make myself available. Um, I'm happy to, you know, jump on a call. Um, here's Martin. I will, if you want to just, I'll give you my email. But, you know, there's a lot to learn. We're all learning together. Um, check out some of the, like, I wish I could, you know, spend all day with you, right? Um, but here, uh, I wanted to give you, point you to things that have inspired me. So the Great Reset from the World Economic Forum, wow, they're doing great work. The Board of Innovation, wow, amazing. So just, you know, take this opportunity to learn as much as you can. It really is great and use um, your mentors. And if you want to reach out to me again here, uh, there was also uh, Chris Peters who left his email, but I'm going to put mine in the chat box too. I'm happy to connect and help with what I can. And I hope that was useful for everyone. I didn't want to, you know, a lot of these presentations try to give you so much information, but I wanted to keep it lean and just make myself available. So See, Entrepreneurs are great at doing this. I mean, I, I love it. Yeah, you kept it lean and we we definitely got, uh, got, got to hear the best parts of it. I also, um, I, I want to make sure that everybody knows that the chat will go away when this call is over. So I'm... Um, I'm going to go in here and I'm copying some of these of myself, but if you wanted to go through the chat and, and copy um, some of these down, I, I will share too with you what I'm copying. So um, after the fact, but yeah, there's the forum, there's the, that event tonight for Meta and boy, if you get a chance to use, you know, try out that Meta by Acai, I, I really loved it. Yeah, it's Board of Innovation, yeah. So. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Um, and thank you everyone for making the time and good luck. Uh, and let's stay in touch. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. Take care. Thank you.